Nice All right. clap. It, so Trent's our Trent's our big clap guy. Um, it, it's it's an incredible talent. It's ninety percent of what I do on this podcast. Yeah, no, it's is really it's really quite impressive. Yeah. Uh, we are joined by a very special guest, 2016 PGA Champion Jimmy Walker. So we just met you for the first time. We're in a little uh, what do you call this? Again? Airstream. Airstream. At the Foot Joy situation, why don't you tell everybody? Because we're at Beth Page. You're of course PGA Champion. You know a lot more about this stuff than we do. Tell everybody where we're at and what's kind of going on. So we are at Beth Page State Park, the golf course is the black course, and tomorrow is the last day that the normal everyday folk can go play it for the PJ Championship. Like us. Yeah, you guys. You, yeah. you can say us. I I don't even know if I could go play it on Sunday, but <laughs> I could try. We're here. But anyways, that's what's happening. And so Footjoy decided to do a little promotional deal and go pull the people that stay in their cars all night and stand in line to get a tea time to go play. And so they figured that there'd probably be a lot of people here being at the last time you get to play it for the PGA. Yep. And Mother Nature hadn't been real nice to us today. It's been pouring rain, uh, which is which is a little tough. But I will say it kind of opened up right when you walked in. So you might have a little a little. Magic I got a little. I got some clout. Yeah, as a little, the, little weather clout. I'll as, take it. I'll take that. As um, a defending champ, it feels like you. Or as a champ, a champ. as a uh, as a former champ, it feels like you got a little bit of clout. I will say. So people talk all the time about how winning a major changes your whole life and all that. I feel like I saw that in incredible form when you walked in with a gigantic Watermaker trophy and everybody just started going nuts. It's pretty cool. Everybody, that, I think all the the people that they pulled out were out getting fitted for all their gear and all their shoes, and they saw me walk in with it, and they they I got a pretty good little cheer for it. The so Wanamaker's huge. It is. It's a big one. It puts all the other major trophies to shame for sure. It just completely dominates. It does. Uh, so Beth Page, like you mentioned, a lot of people out here. You know, we uh, we work, live in the city. Anybody kind of out in the New York area, Long Island area, knows Beth Page pretty well. If you don't, uh, what kind of information can kind of you give them? What are what are you feeling about the course moving to May? What are just kind of your thoughts about the PGA at Beth Page in May? I think it's it's going to be it's going to be a little different. It's going to have a little different feel, probably. I know when we played uh, the I haven't played the players in in March like it used to be. So yeah. I'd always played it in May. So we're there. It was more the week before. We we're like. Is this really the players next week? It just doesn't quite feel like that. And to think of the PGA Championship, which was always the last major, to be the second in May is going to feel weird. But I think once we get here and we see everything that's going on and it's going to have all the feels that having a major has, and especially up here in this area because it could get it gets wild. Yep. Oh, it gets rowdy up here. I think yeah. people expect it to get a little rowdy, the weather. Is going to be kind of hit or miss. Uh, we all look at the at the black course, the sign, the caution sign, and all that about how difficult it is, how tough it is. How are how do you kind of approach that? Do you look at it as wow, this is going to be an unbelievable test? Um, does, do you think it favors your game? Is the ball like how, how do you look at the black? Maybe compared to how the average guy looks at the black. It's it's definitely a challenge. It's a challenge for everybody. I, I played here in 2002. It was my second U.S. Open I played in, and remember how tough it was. And even it even played soft too. And so it played long. But usually when a golf course gets soft, it it plays easier. But for whatever reason that week it didn't. The rough was incredibly deep. Um, being May, I don't know if it's I don't know if the grass is growing or if it's you know kind of I'm not gonna say it's not do- it's not dormant, but I don't know how thick and lush it's going to be i I honestly have no clue you guys have better we haven't gotten much sunlight yeah Yeah. i I don't know no sun right so it'll just be interesting to see it when it gets here i've seen pictures and a lot of the fescue grass is dormant so you get this really cool contrasty looking golf course with the long fescue grass the green grass so look standpoint it looks pretty awesome i was gonna say they nailed the aesthetics yeah it looks whatever good. they do with that it looks good we're not big science guys but i do think that we haven't seen any sunlight yet <laughs> and therefore grass doesn't grow that's kind of what i think <laughs> photosynthesis <laughs> photosynthesis <laughs> that's the word that that's popped a si- in. you nailed science that. word of the day that's the word that popped into my head i think you nailed that and i think it's the right one so speaking of science we got to talk it's astronomy not, but we're <laughs> <laughs> all right it went from the word of the day to you telling me it wasn't correct. I don't think that's right. So what do you think it was? Give us a little scientific lesson here. I on. think I think photosynthesis is the conversion of carbon dioxide to oxygen. That sounds right. 
I don't know. Nah, sound guy agrees. That doesn't sound right to me. I don't I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. <laughs> no, he's like, I'm pretty sure he's 100% sure. And I, you're just wrong. Agree to disagree. That's what's great is about that science. Is that just the only word yeah. that you know about, like, plants is photosynthesis? You threw it out Kinda, there? Kind of, yeah. All right. But that's what's great about science is nobody really knows the answers. Can we talk astronomy? Yeah. So I was on your Instagram a couple of years ago. I think I started following you on Instagram, and I started telling these guys. I was like, I've been going through Jimmy Walker's fucking Instagram, and he just posts pictures of, like, the galaxy all the time. Where's that come from? Where's that interest come from? It started about when my uh, about eight years ago. I it, it started with a, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, I want a telescope. So I got one. And then I kind of started trying to hook a camera up to it and try to figure out how to do that. And and then it turned into just some a crazy obsession. I ended up putting telescopes in really dark spots across the country, and and now we just moved it to Chile, and the, so we get to take a peek at the southern sky. And it just started working operational like last week, two weeks ago. Where's the darkest place you have a telescope? In Chile. That's the only place I've got one right now. But, you know, it's like, where's your telescope? Well, mine's in Chile. <laughs> <laughs> How often are you in a conversation where that question comes up? Where's it's your- it's funny. You, see, you know, I, I get asked a lot because I went through a spell where I wasn't posting a whole lot of astronomy stuff. And okay. I've been having Lyme disease the last couple of years. I haven't had a whole lot of time at night to do a lot of stuff. It's mm-hmm. mostly just uh, get the kids to bed and I fall asleep with them damn near every night. Yeah. So I haven't had a lot of... The drive to do it's been gone, and now that I'm feeling back to 100% and the move down there, like, I'm super stoked to get back at it. Like, I've got an image where we'll be shoot. It's probably actually shooting. It might be working right now, and one more night on one target, and I'll have a really nice, like, set of data to go over to make a new picture. What's your favorite constellation? Constellation, ah, uh, shoot, I don't know. That's, constellations are too big. Was know. that a lame question? You could say that. it is pretty. Sh- yeah. it's like, pretty shitty. Like, <laughs> felt like you were like. I mean, like, like dog shit. I feel like we cons- need to do better. Constellations are like too mainstream astrology. You're sort of into the different well, astrology. Yeah, astrology is like the study of you know the constellations and yeah. your horoscope and. No, not into that. That's kind of hocus pocus. It is hocus like. pocus. I do. A, it's more astronomy, like astronomy. Astronomy. we're more science guys. Right? Yeah. I said astrology. Photosynthesis. I shouldn't have said astrology. That was the wrong word. You but, said it. Uh, yeah, you can't. Photosynthesis. There's like crazy astrologists on Twitter and stuff who always try to get into it with the astronomers. A very confusing world. Yeah, I can't they're, remember. They're quacks. Clearly confusing. <laughs> so, what would have been a better question? Like, tell me about. I got. A, I got a question. We got a guy at work who always says that nothing that we say or do matters because we're all going to get swallowed up and by the sun and die anyways that's just pretty sad way to live your life i think i agree but do you th- is like, he a drunk you- is he an alcoholic <laughs> sometimes yeah yeah i don't know man i mean you look out there and you see all that i mean something something made it i think that's a pretty sad way to live your life we're all gonna die yeah well it's true but you know sounds like he's kind of convincing you here a little bit i'm not convinced <laughs> i'm convinced we're all gonna die when yeah. you when you look, when you do a lot of your, uh, through your telescope and all that, or do you become more or less convinced that there's aliens out there? Oh, more convinced. Oh, you're convinced. I can oh, totally you're, convinced. You're a big alien guy? No, I don't, I don't, have aliens visited the planet? I doubt it. But when you just look at what's really cool, all the exoplanetary research that's going on, I mean, they're finding tons and tons of planets around the closest stars to us. I mean, and it's... They're finding out that there's more planets out there than they've ever, than they thought. And, you know, with a hundred billion stars in our galaxy and there's a hundred billion galaxies and you just do the math. Yeah. It's we can't s- be the only ones. Right? It's pretty simple. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think. Which one's the one that looks for planets? Hubble? Is that Hubble telescope? Uh, no, Hubble, I don't think Hubble does. It's some really fine, it's some different, a different way of doing it. Something about. I'm not crazy into it, but Hubble's more deep space. You ever use your connections with, to like hit up NASA and be like, "I want to look at some crazy shit." I've thought about it. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I've you thought should. about it. But but actually, all of the data that Hubble that Hubble um, acquires is on a archive site, and you can get on there and pull any data set that the Hubble's ever taken. So you can actually get on there and look at anything that the Hubble's ever taken a picture of and put it together and make an image out of it. Wow. 
That's so awesome. That's a little known fact. That's way beyond our capability. Have you been through those files? You, you go. I have actually looked at it a little bit. There? I have. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> well, it's it's it takes a level of Photoshop that I'm not in. <laughs> I'm not that good at it to be able to splice and merge all these pictures together, and I mean, it's it's pretty intense. Like yeah. the people that do these pictures for NASA with the data that they have, the data looks it looks really bad, and I don't know how they do it, but it's pretty amazing. See, we like we spend our free time. I feel like surfing. Like we go down rabbit holes on Game of Thrones theories and stuff. You're Dude, going through. How good data. is that right now? Oh, everybody's going everybody's to die on Sunday. You know See? that. See, right? now you're coming around on the whole idea of everybody dying. <laughs> you're kind of got some dark. You stuff got everybody's going to die. <laughs> it's like your buddy. Everybody's going to die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you guys Why are we going to watch it then? If everybody's going to die, that's a good. So yeah. you're, that's a good it. counter. You're that's just a good like counter. Jared. Yeah, he's just like Jared. Everybody's going to die like us. Why are we going to watch this? You're a Thrones guy. Yeah, we've been Who watching Who do you think's going to win? White Walkers. See? I like that. Is that because the name's well, the man, same? I mean, like, yeah, pretty much. The Jimmy you, White Walkers? Nice. You go fight them. see that? Took you you fight them. You kill You kill a living. They just walk up and, like, touch them. Oh, we got another guy for our side. It's very easy to recruit for them. Right. And then, like, is the, is the Night King a Targaryen because he can ride a dragon? I thought only that. You know, Targaryens could ride a dragon. Jon Snow. Jon Snow. I mean, yeah. It's, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be awesome. It really is amazing, their recruiting process, how simple it is. Yeah. It is. He it's lifts not his, fair. He lifts his arms, and everybody's like, we're with that guy. Yeah. It's pretty insane. Think about what our military, how they need to be taking notes. Lift Night your arms King's, in the Night King's recruiting process is off the charts. Where do you think he's at? He wasn't in the, um, he wasn't in the shot when they showed the White Walkers at the end, the Jimmy White Walkers. Mm-hmm. He's there. I don't know. He's riding a dragon somewhere, so you couldn't see him. He's up there flying around. He's, he's going to the... torch the joint. Uh, so the Masters this year, um, a lot of people kind of buzzing. You've, uh, of course, you've been you've been um, on teams with Tiger Woods, teams that Tiger Woods is a part of in some capacity. You've already been out on tour for a really long time, as has Tiger. Um, what do you think kind of the Masters, the way it went down, means for kind of golf going forward? I think it's 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 great. It's great to see him – put all the hard work and time that he's put into getting himself back into shape and never doubted the guy as a as a winner. I mean, guys won more golf tournaments and big golf tournaments and just gotten it done. So you don't ever forget how to do that. Mm-hmm. But it was a matter of, of him being able to physically go play golf again and walk and do all that. And, you know, I don't know how many back surgeries you had, four or something, and you know it's a testament to him as a person and getting back into getting his body back right you know he kept kept going at it if the surgery didn't work he had another one he had mm-hmm. another one and he finally got to where he could do it i mean it was 2 years ago you watch him walk upstairs he couldn't even walk upstairs i yeah. mean it was brutal and you're like you felt you felt bad for him like man i don't know if he's ever i had my doubts like i don't know if he can ever play golf again mm-hmm. you right. know and then it, then you worried about it was a quality of life deal for him it's like watching some of these football players when they get older, you know, they're just kind of, like, they just don't look good. And you're like, man, one more hit. It's like watching, you know, huge Cowboys fan when Romo was going through all that at the end of his career. And we're like, man, just shut it down, man. You're like, <laughs> get, off, get in the booth. Man, one more hit and you're going to break in right. half, you know. <laughs> and, right. and I was happy to see him do what he did. So um, it's it's good. It's good for golf. It's good for the game. And you could really feel it. Um my Instagram search feed is all Tiger Woods right now. <laughs> <laughs> Same. So you touched on it earlier, but as a guy yourself, you've had you've gone through some some struggles the last couple of years with the disease and all that. Just do you take some kind of inspiration from seeing someone else you kind know, of come back, go through some hard times, and then get back to the top? Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I think as a athlete, we've all had our ups and downs, and they may not be as um, in the limelight of the media as, as some of the others uh, that you see, but I think we all have our ups and downs, and everybody that's been on tour for a long time I know has. So right. um, seeing what he did was, it was great, and I I really applaud the guy for doing it. Um, it's, it's, it's really cool, and what a cool place to do it too, you know. It was awesome. So where are you at? Where are you at health-wise, game-wise? How are you feeling going into – um, kind of the the meat really now that we're getting into yeah. of the season with a bunch of majors coming up and all that. Physically, I feel great. Uh, there's a there was a there's a component mentally and physically to Lyme disease, and I'm I felt like the the 
physical got better and then I was dealing with a little bit of the uh, like mental stuff a little bit about just feeling foggy and the brain to body connection not being good and I think that that's I think that's starting to get better now uh, I haven't played great this year but I'm making all the cuts but I keep finishing like 40th and 50th and 30th and you just can't vault up the FedEx points and and uh, but the Masters felt good I was proud. I was happy with that. I had three really good rounds the week before in San Antonio, and I've practiced hard the last two weeks, and I've only played twice, but both rounds were deep into the 60s, so that was nice to see on two different golf courses uh, at home. And so that's nice to see, seeing the birdies, and I feel good. So I'm real excited to go start at, at uh, Charlotte next week and then play four in a row, and then we get the kids out of school and go to Utah. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Yeah. Uh, what's the most nervous you've ever been over a golf shot? Playing with Tiger Woods. I was. Uh, this is so easy. So Came right to you. Oh, it's it's a great. It's a funny story. It's not. A, it's a good story. I was. I qualified for the Byron Nelson in 2001 as an amateur, and I was right in the middle of finals at school. You know, my parents told me not to try to qualify because I was going through finals and I ran their credit card anyways and went and did it and I qualified. <laughs> like that move. Relatable, yeah. relatable move. Yeah. Yeah. So. Qualified, and I, I had to go into a playoff the next morning because we ran out of daylight. And I, so I drove back to Baylor, and then went back up to Dallas the next morning, and qualified. And I had to run back down and go take a test. And then I had to talk to like two other teachers and tell like, "Hey, this just happened. Is there any chance you can let me take the final like after the week?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, but no problem. Whatever." So I go back up there. And it's Tuesday late afternoon, and I'm running around, and Tiger's out there. Uh, he's skipping around holes, and he skips over to my hole, and it's like 5 in the afternoon. Nobody's on the golf course except him and I. And he skips over, hits a drive on the par 5 that I'm on. I'm on the green, and I walk up to the next tee, which is a par 3, and he picks up his drive and walks straight to the par 3 tee. He's like, hey, man, I'm just playing a couple holes. Can I, can I play through? I'm trying to play fast. And I was like, yeah, sure, man. You can do whatever the hell you want. You're Tiger Woods. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm just some college kid, whatever. So he tees off first on the par three, and he looked like he hit a good shot. It's like an eight iron or whatever it was. So I'm I'm like, I can't even get the peg in the ground. I can't get the <laughs> ball on the tee. Every bad thought is going through my head. I'm shaking. I'm nervous. Don't shank it. Don't fat it. Don't thin it. I mean, everything is going through my head. And I make a swing, and I hit it, and it felt good, and I look up, and it's going right at the flag. And I'm just like, oh, thank God. So we start walking down, and we're talking, and he's like, what are you doing? I said, like, oh, I'm underqualified. I'm still in school. He's like, cool, cool. And, and uh, we get down to the green, and his ball's like 12 feet, and mine's like eight. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, damn. I'm like, I'll never be that nervous again. I know in the history of my career I'll never be that nervous again, and I haven't to this day. Um, I was like, man, if I can hit that good a shot, being that petrified, it's like I might, I might be able to do this. <laughs> I was gonna say that's crazy. As a guy who's come down the stretch and and, and played an in, insanely intense hole, eighteenth hole to win a major championship. You're yeah, like, but, oh, Tiger Woods. but in that situation, <laughs> like I mean, you're leading a major championship, you're firing all cylinders. I've always, you know, you've got to enjoy the times when you're on fire and playing good and hitting right. the shots and making putts and. Never really get nervous under those situations because I know I'm doing good. It's a lot harder when you're you got nine holes to go and you're two strokes back of the cut and you're playing horrible. You know that's pressure. It's like man, I don't play good on this next nine holes and make the cut. I'm going home. <laughs> I, that's how I always. It's harder to play good. It's harder to. I've always felt more nervous when I'm not playing well because right. you're just like man, I don't know. But when you're firing, like enjoy that. It doesn't happen all that often so really wrap yourself around how cool that is that what, feeling what's your biggest superstition in the golf course i don't know if i have any honestly i really don't that's what everybody says and then well, yeah. what do you do every time you play and then they go like well I, I don't have any but i only keep nine t's in my pocket at all yeah, times i, don't, I keep I my don't do that this side i don't do that Put you know one shoe on your left shoe no on all the time. i only i play with ones and threes Okay. Number ball. That's it. That's okay. about my only like superstition. Right. I'm not a, I'm not a. Oh, I just made a birdie, so that ball's done. Or oh, I just made 
a bogey with that ball. It's done. I don't do that. Okay. No well, superstitions. I'm sorry. It's boring. No, that's okay. all right. That's right. It's just, it, it is interesting because, like we said, everybody starts with that, and usually they end up telling us like 15 of them. Yeah. But it sounds like you're, <laughs> sounds like you're really pretty clean. Don't. Sounds like you're pretty clean. I really do. Favorite don't. club in the bag? Oh, the the favorite club's a putter because when that thing's on, it just, it just, it's kick, it's an ass kicker. I mean, it's, it'll cure everything. Mm-hmm. Putter. Uh, uh, what's the best golf shot you ever hit? Hmm. That one with Tiger sounded pretty good. That was pretty good. That was a pretty good shot. Second best golf. There's shot so many, good. so many good shots. I mean, uh, you you could you could go down to. I can remember when in, when I won Pebble, I had to make about a four and a half footer on those bumpy Poana greens and the pro amps. So there's way more people walking on the greens than there needs to be, and to be able to make a putt to win a golf tournament on those greens in that condition was was pretty badass. That's awesome. Well, Jimmy Walker, we don't keep you uh, any longer. We appreciate you taking the time, being very candid and hanging out with us, and uh, we're glad you're back out there, feeling good, playing good, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you, Barstool. Yeah, we appreciate it. Appreciate it. (laughs) 